Today on Animal Fact Files, we're going to be looking at the fallow deer. If you like learning facts about animals, then subscribe to this channel so you can stay up to date on all the new content. Fallow deer are an Eurasian deer species with a bit of a muddled history. Originally, they were native to the Mediterranean, but they have become naturalized, or they have adapted to live in, most parts of Europe as well as many parts of Asia. They were introduced to Britain in the 11th century by the Normans, and their numbers increased from that time due to deer parks, or fenced areas of land where medieval deer were kept for hunting. Captive deer would escape deer parks and form wild groups. Eventually, even as deer parks fell to the wayside, established herds of fallow deer would make it so that the species continued to prosper. Now they can be seen wildly in England, Ireland, Iraq, Iran, and more. They are also captively kept on every inhabited continent. Sorry, Antarctica. They tend to favor wooded areas with underbrush and large grassy meadows interspersed. They're considered a mid-sized deer and could be seen as just slightly larger than the domestic goat. Males are slightly larger than females, averaging around 150 pounds in weight, with females at about 90 pounds. Male shoulder height is about 3 feet, and female shoulder height is around 2.5 feet. Although it's possible for a female fallow deer to grow antlers, it's highly irregular and usually caused by a genetic abnormality. Males typically start growing antlers within their first year as small spikes, but as they mature, the antlers begin to branch more. Fallow deer are the only deer with naturally occurring palmate antlers, or antlers that look like a hand with extended fingers. Think kind of like a moose. Fallow deer come in four main color variations. There's the most common, where the deer are rust-colored, with white spots on their back, a white to beige belly, and a black line running down their tail. The next is referred to as the Manil variant, and showcases fur that's tan in color with white spots that are visible year-round. They also come in a dark brown color that appears almost black, this variant being called melanistic, and also a white variant which is not a display of albinism but instead called leukistic. These are the rarest color variety of fallow deer. Typically, they'll live around 15 years, but there are records of some living well into their 20s. Although both males and females reach sexual maturity within their first two years of life, and females typically give birth to their first fawn during this time, males are usually not successful in scoring a mate until they're between three and four years of age. The reason for this is that males compete for females' affections, and typically the younger males just aren't strong or experienced enough to take on the larger, older males. During the mating season, which occurs roughly between September and November, with October being the peak of the season, fallow deer can be found together in large herds of mixed sexes. However, after this time, the large groups tend to disperse, with males forming bachelor groups of around five individuals and females sticking with groups of other females and fawns. The pregnancy of a fallow deer lasts a little over 30 weeks, and they tend to give birth around June or July. Fawns usually weigh about 10 pounds when they're born, meaning they're just a little bit smaller than Chester. Of course, fallow deer get much bigger than our fun-loving house cat. By eating grasses, leaves, tree bark, and berries, fallow deer will continue to grow until they reach their adult size. While growing up and throughout their lifetime, fallow deer have to be on the lookout for wolves, bears, and large cats, such as cougars or lynxes. There are actually two subspecies of fallow deer in the world. There is the European fallow deer and the Persian or the Mesopotamian fallow deer. The Persian fallow deer is considered by some to be the rarest and least known mammal of its size. It's endangered in its natural environment, although reintroduction efforts have been made for them. It's possible that these are some of the white deer described in legends. In Tales of King Arthur, he was described as chasing a white stag and being unsuccessful in its capture. This motif follows in the Chronicles of Narnia, when the kings and queens follow a white deer through the woods to find themselves at a familiar-looking lamppost. The white deer is seen as a symbol of prophecy. Although nothing explicitly states that white deer of legends are fallow deer, most consider the deer seen in these myths as white forms of red deer. What do you think? Could fallow deer be part of the legends of white deer? For more information on the fallow deer, feel free to browse through our citations in the description below. Let us know what animal you'd like to see covered in the comments. Thank you for watching and be sure to give a thumbs up for more animal fact files.